Something that fascinates me endlessly is how painters manage to incorporate natural light into their paintings. One of the painters who managed the perfect this was Pierre Auguste Renoir, especially in his incredible work titled Dance at Le Moulin de la Galette. Many depicted people were friends of Renoir, and each of them has an interesting story to tell. Some stories are funny, others are tragic. I'll explain exactly why in this video. This vivid scene is a snapshot of everyday life of working class Parisians in the second half of the 19th century. There's eating, drinking, chatter, dancing and a good dose of fooling around. Yes, this was leisure for people who were living rough lives at the time. The longer you stare at this painting, the more it feels as if this scene comes to life and you're transported back into this outdoor dance hall. Before I dive deeper into the painter's world and that of his friends, let's take a closer look at the setting of this mesmerizing painting. We can't really see it, but this location was situated on Montmartre Hill in Paris, right next to where two windmills once stood. The first windmills on top of the hill were constructed here in the 17th century, but by the early 19th century only two of them still stood here. The property was acquired by the Debré family in 1809. They used the flour milled by these structures to bake delicious galettes, a type of bread that was originally served with a glass of milk. By 1830, the milk was replaced by gallons of wine as more people flocked to the so-called Guinguette, an outdoor entertainment venue. During weekdays, Cancan dancers performed here and entertained members of the French bourgeoisie. Sunday afternoons were reserved for working-class Parisians, like the ones depicted in Renoir's painting. Apart from a lot of laughter and polka dancing, these windmills also witnessed a fair share of atrocities. In 1814, Cossack troops killed three members of the Debré family as they tried to defend the windmills at Montmartre. But that wasn't all. During the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, Pierre Charles Debré, the owner at the time, was killed by the Prussians and his corpse was nailed to one of his own windmills. Renoir's Dance at the Moulin de la Galette was painted in 1876, just six years after this horrific event took place, so it was likely witnessed by many of the people in the painting. This kind of makes it easy to understand why people wanted to get away from the crowded and polluted city and visit this place. Back then, Montmartre was still a rural area Unlike today, as it has been swallowed completely by the urban jungle of the Parisian metropolitan area. Today, only the Moulin Radet still stands, but not in its original location. Remarkably, this monument still serves as the entrance to a restaurant named Le Moulin de la Galette. The painter's story is quite remarkable as well. He was one of the original Impressionists, and for him, the conditions were quite different as he tried to make a name for himself in the art world. Renoir started studying art in the early 1860s, but after his work was rejected a couple of times for the Paris Salon, he tried to develop a revolutionary technique. Together with his friends Claude Monet, Camille Pissarro and many others, and inspired by the technique of Edouard Monet, he started painting outdoors, something the academic community looked down upon. His loose brush strokes and use of light were unseen before, and it took several years before he gained some sort of recognition. During this rough period, he ate beans for breakfast and beans for dinner. In between, if he had enough money for paint, he depicted scenes from everyday life in Paris. When he finally sold the painting for a significant amount of money, he moved to Montmartre in the mid-1870s. It's here that he painted Dance at the Moulin de la Galette, which was just a few blocks away from Pierre Auguste Renoir's old studio. Today, the painter's lodging and old studio are still here, along with the beautiful garden he painted several times. This idyllic garden has been preserved at the Musée Montmartre, and was the setting for his famous painting La Balanceuse, also known as The Swing. This painting features two of his close friends, fellow painter Norbert Gounut and Jean Samarie, as well as his brother Edmond, who is seen from the back. This brings us closer to Dance at the Moulin de la Galette, because Gounut was also featured in it. The 16-year-old Jean Samarie, on the other hand, refused to serve as a model for the painting. 
she was likely too busy with her boyfriend at the time. Before I go over the people who have been identified in this painting, let me tell you another remarkable anecdote about Renoir's struggle to actually paint it. There's a reason why people built windmills here in the 17th century. That's because the summit of Montmartre is the highest point in Paris, so it's quite windy. Renoir painted this beautiful painting on the spot, so he had a very difficult time keeping the canvas steady. He made a smaller version of the painting as well, but until today, it remains unknown which one he completed outdoors, and which one he completed in his studio. This didn't really matter for the value of these artworks, because the smaller version was sold for a whopping $78 million in 1990. This was the second highest price paid for a painting at the time, after Van Gogh's portrait of Dr. Gachet, which is quite amazing. Now let's take a closer look at who was depicted by Renoir in Dance at the Moulin de la Galette. The first thing you notice that this painting bathes in natural light. The painter added patches of white paint everywhere to achieve this. Like most impressionists, he took the definition of loose brush strokes to another level. Just look at this young girl's dress, for example, or the uncomfortable man's striped trousers. There are three men in the bottom right corner of this work. One is sitting with his back towards the viewer as he talks to two girls. This is Georges Riviere, a friend of Renoir who became an art critic. It's also because of him that we know more about the people in this painting and how it came about. In 1921, he wrote a book titled Renoir et ses amis, or Renoir and his friends. In it, he goes into more detail about dance at the Moulin de la Galette. Therefore, we know that the two men sitting beside him are Pierre-Franc Lamy, with a distinctive straw hat, and Norbert Gounut, the man who also appears in the painter's other work discussed earlier. You surely guessed it, but these two were also painters and friends of Renoir at the time. One of the most remarkable figures is the girl in blue and pink stripes, to whom the attention is drawn in the foreground. She was Estelle Samari, the sister of Jeanne, one of Renoir's favorite models who refused to pose for this painting. This is quite remarkable because both girls, along with their parents, were regulars on Sunday afternoons at the Moulin de la Galette. Further in the distance, we can see several more lesser-known painters and artists dancing with girls, as well as a man who doesn't seem to be having the best time of his life. He was identified by Riviera as a Cuban painter named Don Pedro Vidal de Solares y Cardenas. Yes, this was really his name. He came to Paris to pursue a career as an artist and assumed that he could just blend in among the locals by dressing the same way they did. This didn't work out. It wasn't long before an exuberant girl started dancing polkas with him, and his demeanor in this painting explains exactly how he felt about that. The 20-year-old girl dancing with the Cuban was Marguerite Legrand, a model commonly referred to as Margot at the time. She was another of Renoir's favorite models, and possibly his lover as well. She might have had a wonderful life together with the successful painter but she contracted typhoid fever three years after this painting was completed. Renoir did everything he could to help her, and even engaged Dr. Gachet, the man who also treated Vincent van Gogh during the final months of his life. It didn't help, and she died on February 18, 1879, aged just 23. It was Pierre-Auguste Renoir who paid for the expenses of her funeral. This was the same year that Renoir sold his world-famous masterpiece to another of his friends, Gustave Caillebotte. And this is an important element. He was a painter as well, who appeared in Renoir's other iconic painting titled Luncheon of the Boating Party. Unlike Renoir, Caillebotte didn't have to scrape money together to buy paint as he received a large inheritance after his parents died during the 1870s. This allowed him to not only paint without pressure, but also acquire paintings from his friends. He helped impressionist artists financially, which is one of the main reasons we can admire their paintings today. When Kai Bot died in 1891, he owned 68 paintings. He had stipulated that they must be displayed at the Luxembourg Museum in Paris, but the French government refused. 
It was Pierre Auguste Renoir who made a deal with the French government, and therefore, 38 were still transferred to the museum in Paris. In 1896, the 38 paintings from Caillebotte's collection, including Danza de Moulin de la Galette, became the first Impressionist paintings in a permanent public museum in France. And it was Pierre Auguste Renoir who arranged it at the time, as he had been appointed as the executioner of his French will. The painting hung in this location between 1896 and 1929, as it was moved to the Louvre Museum. It was moved once again and became part of the collection of the Musée d'Orsay in 1989. Unfortunately, the smaller version was sold to a private collector in 1990, and its whereabouts are unknown today. So to conclude, this painting can be described as the embodiment of the Impressionist movement. It's a snapshot of real life in Paris during the 1870s, and Renoir had the remarkable ability to make the scene come to life. If you stare at it long enough, you can actually hear the chatter, laughter and music. This was what these working class people lived for, once a week, every Sunday afternoon, at the Moulin de la Galette.